The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Open stars and strikes. Look at this. Look at this. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Looks good. Got a good set. That's the girl. It's a girl. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Voting Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burke. Hi, everybody, and welcome back once again to Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And again, to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire, I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and it's championship week, first of all, in our uh, mixed doubles series, and then in our second hour starting at 1 o'clock in ladies' doubles. Certainly is, and we've had some spectacular uh, ma matches the last few weeks, and now we've got a number one and number two seeded teams, and I expect some of the same. Yeah, in fact, the higher seeded team has won every match in this series so far. So. Peter says, let's go home. Why, why, why bowl? <laughs> well, Peter and, uh, and Nancy will have their hands full today because they're playing and bowling against a team that came off a very, very dramatic win last week. And let's meet both of our teams now. First of all, our second-seeded team from Hudson, New Hampshire, Mike Poulin, his partner from Derry, New Hampshire, Louise Hamilton. Okay, Mike averages 125, his roll-off score 738, and Louise is averaging 116, her roll-off score 633. And last week uh, on the final ball of the match, Mike Poulin and Louise Hamilton beating Joe Ashley and Wendy Sandin, 351 to 349. And so this week they go for the championship and their second win in a row against our number one seeded team from Bradford, Massachusetts, Peter Flynn and his partner from Derry, New Hampshire, Nancy Hunt. Okay, Peter comes in averaging 130. His roll-off score, he was a top-seeded uh, man in the roll-off at 739. And Nancy, 111, and she was the highest uh, lady at 635. And, of course, uh, $800 to be split among the winning team today, $400 to the runner-up team. We also have our bonus ball contest coming up at the end of the show. Lots to talk to you about, and we'll get the bowling started right after these messages. All right, we have reached championship week, and we have our top two seeded teams remaining. If you missed it, three weeks ago, the first week of the series, Larry Valcourt, Debbie Regan advanced with a win over Gary Carrington and Karen Valcourt. Then uh, two weeks ago, it was Joe Ashline and Wendy Sandin winning their match, but last week they were knocked off on that outstanding finish, Mike Poulin and Louise Hamilton. And now here we go. Our top two teams, Mike Poulin and Louise Hamilton against Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt, and Mike Poulin. Left-hander on lane 32 with the first ball of the match. Can't convert the triangle. Nine box for Mike. And quickly a nine pin advantage. <laughs> The way this series has been going, you can almost uh, anticipate that wow. this thing's going to go down to the end. That was a strange strike. Let's take a look at that one again. Pinfall here. Looks like everything came from the top and kind of just collapsed. However, Mike will take it. Peter Flynn. Peter Flynn has done about everything you can do on Stars and Strikes this season so far. He has already qualified for both the singles and the doubles tournament of champions. And he's qualified also for this event, so he's done it all. The only thing he can't get into is the women's doubles. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and there's nothing he can do about if that. If you shave that beard off. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't fool our judges, though. They're too sharp. There isn't much that Peter hasn't done in the game of canopin bowling, really. That's very true. Oh, 
He moved into the singles tournament of champions with a 403. He currently stands as the number two seed for that. And for the doubles tournament of champions, he moved into that just uh, four weeks ago with Chuck Godzik, and they stand as the number three seeded team at the moment. No, not this time. And a 10. Hey, now Louise Hamilton to work on the strike. Left by her partner. One, seven, eight, and nine. With the wood, it could go. I'd certainly rather have the wood than not. First order of business, though, catch the head pin. Nope. Off to the right. And a 10. That's what she wanted to do the first time. This time off to the left. And a six, two at a time. Uh, first look at Nancy Hunt, a newcomer to our program. Almost everything but the head pin. And it's still there for nine. That's it, that's it. Come on. Five, seven, ten. With double piece of wood in front of the five pin, which she'll go after, and there, who knows? Ball could carry him one way in the pin and the other and get all three. Or? <laughs> I was going to say, or none at all. <laughs> Just the five pin goes down. And it's an eight. Five pin advantage early in the match for Mike Poole and Louise Hamilton. And Mike takes out the one, eight, and nine. No. And there goes the six. He was trying to catch the three and the six light to see if he could throw it over and make something happen. Now he's going to try and escape with a box here. And he'll take seven. 49 half. Next week, of course, uh, starting at 12 noon, we'll be back here on the winds, back to our regular format. At noon, it'll be five brand new bowlers in singles competition. We'll be looking for our fifth qualifier from that series for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. And then, of course, at 1 o'clock next week, we'll start a brand new series on Stars and Strikes doubles as well.
Mike started and the wood started to roll again and kind of held up. One in the ten. No. <laughs> and one thing I can tell you about those two series starting next week, Peter Flynn will not be in either one. <laughs> Today will be the last time you see Peter Flynn until the spring, <laughs> the tournament. The team of Flynn and Hunt looking for their first mark. Here's Peter Flynn. Spread eagle. to the 2, 4, and 7, 3, 6, 10 left. This time, just the 5 pin. Right there for the spare. Each team with one mark now. Spare for Peter Flynn's team and Nancy Hunt and Mark a strike for Mike Poulin and Louise Hamilton. Here's Louise now in the seventh, losing that ball a little bit to the left, but not too bad. Lost it far enough to the left to get a break. One, three, and nine. Ooh, slip right by the three pin. Louise still uh, favoring that right ankle a little bit. She sprained it a few weeks back. Oh, and this time the five pin robs her. And it'll be a nine box, 78 through eight. So now Nancy Hunt comes up with a chance to put her team in the lead. <laughs> That's right, anything over two. They trail by two at this point. It's gonna be more than two. That looks like a pretty good ball. Oh, could be all of them, let's see. Nope, the 10 pin will stay. And the wood is going to stay away, it appears. Watch out. Ooh, how about that? I was worried that it was going to dip into the channel and hit that piece of wood. And she fit it right in between. Didn't hit the 10 pin or the piece of wood. I'll bet she could stand out here 100 times and not, not do, do that, that again. <laughs> but it's enough to take the lead by seven. Low scoring affair. Standards of both teams. It looks good. Oh, oh it is pretty wow. good. You got robbed on the nine pin. And the ten. Picking up another pin and count, and the lead is now eight. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire on Route 28. One of our participating sponsors for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Stop in, say hi to Emmett Horgan and the gang. Come to Salem and save at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. 4-10 left by Mike. Pretty good looking ball going in. He's going to have to clip the four on the right-hand side and sweep everything to the right. 
No, nope, had the idea, but the 10 pin is still there. And now it's got a piece of wood in front of it. But he gets by. Take another look at that spare chance. Just caught a little too much of the piece of wood out in front. Needed more of the four pin. That way you took advantage of both pieces of wood flying toward the 10 pin. Final box. Needs a mark to break the 100. And he's going to have a shot at one. Just a nine. Yes. Second mark for the team. 98 plus a ball. Bit of a punch out, just five for a 103. Well, Peter Flynn can maintain the lead without a mark. Ooh, <laughs> so much for without a mark. Nine of them went quick. Oh, seven pin was a little stubborn. And there it goes. The three, six, and nine with wood in the middle. It would definitely help with a sleeper in the back, the nine. Oh yeah. Spare on strike for Peter Flynn. 116 plus a ball. So that's a 13 pin lead plus the fill. Another ball on the head pin, and this time he kicks out the three pin. An eight fill, a 124, and a 21 pin lead for Flynn and Hunt over Poulin and Hamilton. Two games to go here. Championship week, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Nancy Hunt starting game two, her team in the lead. And Nancy trying to negotiate this shot for a spare, oh, and she's got it. Great shot. And you see the replay of the spare, trying to build on the 21 pin advantage. Eight pin drop. Testy piece of wood up near the cap. Mmm, uh. took it away. <laughs> Twenty eight opening pair. Now Louise Hamilton. Trying to win, as you see, her second consecutive mixed doubles tournament. She was paired with John Maffio last year. They won three straight matches to win it. And now this year, after a win last week, to run her record to 4-0. and Trying to do it again. Nine box out of the half Worcester. Don't forget, stay tuned at one o'clock immediately following this match for the championship match of our ladies doubles tournament. See what Louise can do here with the one, eight, and ten. 
can't see it from that angle, but there are two pieces of wood in between the one and the eight. Good shot. Ooh. Wow. Boy, he picked the head pin up, went over the eight pin. Thought she had a chance at making it and took out only one of the three pins standing. And that second piece of wood is still exactly where it was. Hasn't moved. Two nines for Louise. No one with this many appearances on Candlepin Stars and Strikes has a better winning percentage than this man. Peter has been here on 18 previous occasions and has lost only four times. And the percentage is... Oh yeah, that many times. I was going to dispute that because I was on once and I won. <laughs> <laughs> With this many appearances, yeah, but, okay. Yeah, but yours was a handicap match. <laughs> <laughs> Spare in a third, Peter Flynn. Continues to build the lead now. 78%, by the way. Well, I knew that. You had to figure it out on a piece of paper? Yeah. Seven, Phil. Six, seven, ten. Lot for Peter, and the wood looks to be just about right for him. So off the wood, the ball should take the 6-10, and the wood take the 7. Let's see if it happens. Yes. Great shot. Two marks for Peter Flynn. Mike Poulin trying to mix, and he does, leaving the seven pin on kind of a light hit. Yeah, the wood turned a little bit for him. That's going to help a little bit. And there's a mark. Important to uh, put at least one mark up here for Mike because I don't want the team of Flynn and Hunt to run too far ahead. Seven is the fill. <laughs> Two, four, and six left. <laughs> and a nine box. We will take a break right here. About halfway through our championship match, the team of Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt in the lead and will return. Nancy Hunt, working on the spare left by her partner, Peter Flynn, filling with six. And oh, converting yes. it for a spare. Three marks in a row for the team now. Just catches enough of the head pin. Watch the head pin. Right side wall and spinning off for the nine. She's right back on the head pin again, and let's see. Needs a little break here. Four, seven, ten. A makeable shot with a wood. 78 half for the team of Flynn and Hunt here in game two. Ooh, she's got to catch a piece of the right one. Not Almost quite enough. got it anyways, but I should say the left one. That one in front of the four pin. She had to catch a little piece of that one. Well, 88 through six, another good start by the team of Nancy Hunt and Peter Flynn. Louise Hamilton, right through the middle. Catching. 
And a nine box off the spread eagle. But the lead is now 46. The team of Flynn and Hunt halfway through the match. Shooting this time at the one, three, six, and seven. No playable wood. Eight. Lead now is 48. 27 in this game alone. Peter Flynn with a split. 2-4, 6-10. Take a chance on that piece of wood there? I take a piece of the wood and shooting at the two pin at the same time, just like that. Oh, <laughs> well, seemed like a good play. That way you can get it moving from right to left as well as if you go by it, you might cut the two pin. Let's see what happened. Just the wood just went a little deep. Just missing behind the six pin. And another split. This one may be a little bit easier to convert. Two we'll ways. See. Could try to sweep the wood from the right to the left or straight down the middle. Take a piece of the wood and have the ball take the five and the wood take the four, seven. Oh, he's a little too far left. So a couple of open frames for Mike Poulin to work on. Two ten boxes for Pete. Oh, big shot for Mike Poulin right there. Almost looks like Mike moved a little farther to the right, give himself a different angle coming in on that 1-3, and certainly work with that ball. Double would be very nice for this team. Maybe. Let's see. Oh, look good enough to be, and at least he gets a 9-pin drop. First of all, it looked for a minute like it was 7-10. Rolling quite hard enough to knock the 7-pin down. Big mark here and 10 pins off that lead. Can convert this for a spare. Mike's just waiting it out here. It's not going to be a factor in the shot, but according to the rules of the game, you have to wait till the wood has settled. And after all that time, it is very difficult to convert a single pin. But he does just that. Reduces the lead to 38, and it'd still be working on a mark when Louise Hamilton comes up for the ninth and 10 frames. Nancy Hunt. Nancy, as we mentioned, making her very first appearance with us on Stars and Strikes from Derry, New Hampshire. She and her husband, Bob, have uh, three children, Rick, Brian, and Kimberly. Yeah. Nancy is an entrepreneur. She owns Creative Monograms Plus. Does a lot of her bowling at the Londonderry Bowling Center. Takes an eight box in the ninth. Off target left this time. Four horsemen right plus the four seven. Oh, chance for Louise Hamilton cut into that lead some more. A good fill in a couple marks. They could put it down to where it's going to be a little more manageable going into that third game. Just a six box there for Nancy in the tenth. So 14 pins in the two and a real good opportunity here for Louise Hamilton. Wow. 
Louise has struggled a little bit today. This would be a good time to come out of it. Nine drop on the spare. And ideally, you want to come up a little high in the wood. However, if she was to shoot right at the pin, this pin may go into the channel and come back out. In fact, now it might be second piece rolling against it. I almost like a chance of shooting right at the pin. That's what she's doing. Got it. Three marks in a row for the team. Lead now from 48 down to 27 and counting. Still working on a mark. Full box left. And this one's to the left. Not too bad though. Seven pin drop. One, three, and six left. They've already won this game, so they're going to be in better position than they were before this game started. This would be a big mark. Ooh, oh, just sliding by. Now, you can gain four more and count, regardless if you knock this one down. Does so. 127 and a two game total, 230 for Poulin and Hamilton, 246 for Flynn and Hunt. We've got one game to go to decide our Stars and Strikes Mixed Doubles Championship. We'll be back. WNDS. Back we are for game three and Mike Poulin to lead it off. I think the crowd here, as well as most of you at home, almost wrote Mike and Louise off there halfway through that second game. They came roaring back and actually improved their position. No, nah, really. I never, I never thought that because I've seen too many weird things happen here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh not mm -hmm. quite on the ten pin. Missed it. Just missed it twice. S split the two pins out front. Threw the head pin around it, and then the second piece come rolling up against it, and just the ten box though. Head pin right around it, and then just nudging it there. A thin hit, but look at this action! Look at this! A nine drop. It wasn't a bad hit going in. It just kind of happened slowly. Mike looking at the seven pin. Got it for the spare. Mark number seven for the team. Each team with seven now. Peter Flynn from Bradford, Mass. Peter and wife Deborah have two sons, Sean, who's 10, and Craig, who's 7. Peter does most of his uh, bowling at the Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, and he's sponsored by Grandpa's Printing. Peter thought he was going to get a half Worcester on that first ball. He carried an extra pin or two, but didn't have much to shoot at. Nine box. This time he will, though. The three and the five, and Cindy Sissom will go down and check that piece of wood, although I have a feeling it's going to be immaterial one way or the other. I think it's going to be out. Yeah, and even if it were in, I'm sure Peter wouldn't pay any attention to it. It will be taken out of play, so it'll be the three and the five. For the spare, yes. To match the spare that Mike Poulin put up there. Now the fill for Louise Hamilton and Mike Poulin. Boy, right there, leaving the 10 pin. 
It looked a little full at the beginning, but it did. Great mixing action. And got a lot of help down there right now for the 10 pin. Anywhere in the right side of the lane should cover it, and there it is. Well, and another break, missing the head pin, a seven drop. The one, three, and nine pins. Oh, that, I'm not going to like that wood like that. That throws the ball one way or the other, and the pins the other way, and leaves the nine pin, unless you can come up high enough. Oh, not enough to carry it. You've apparently had that leave a few times, huh? Yes. <laughs> And much the same has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Ten box for Louise. 56 through four. And a little extra pressure here now on Nancy Hunt to try and uh, get a mark up there. She's working on a spare. Fills with five. And this lead is going to be in the sickle digits unless Nancy can convert mark this next box. Eight. To lead down to two. That's a good looking ball, but oh. not much to show for that. Hit the wood and hope, I guess, but on the five, six, seven, and 10. Boy, every match in this series has gone right down to the last few boxes. Last, last week down to the last ball. And some great, great matches. And a chance here to lose the lead. Unless you can get a couple of them, it'll be tied up, I nope. believe. Gets two and it is tied up. Six boxes to go, and we're going to start over when we come back to decide this championship. Don't go away. Mike Poulin now. Six boxes to decide this thing. All tied. Mike's got a little rosin bag with him that he's using uh, before every time before he goes up to the lanes. Seven and nine. Go right at the seven pin. Unless this wood second piece rolls out a little further. And the ball's I still think you have to go at the seven pin, have the ball come off the wall for the seven and have the wood take the nine. Let's see if it'll work. Nope. Hey, this match is all even. Each team with eight marks. Couldn't be uh, any more even at this point, but that really doesn't tell the story because halfway through the second game, six boxes into the second game actually, Flynn and Hunt had a 48 pin lead. And now it's all gone. Oh, how about this now? Now it's getting to look like the uh, the runner who used up all his energy to get to the top, and now he just mm. can't seem to get a break and put him over the top and grab the lead. It's two pretty good balls that Mike put in there and two difficult spare leaves and wasn't able to convert either one of them. But he's going to pin them. Two tens. Can't lose the lead unless the other team marks. Peter Flynn. Right through the middle for a spread eagle. Boy. These are all head pin hits too, <laughs> these last few. See, I don't really understand why Peter went left that time. 
Looks like right he could clip that wood and spin that wood too if he undercut it. There, just like that. Unless he was shooting to the right side. So an eight. And the lead swings to Poulin and Hamilton by two. Another one. When was the last right. time you saw somebody get two spread eagles in a row? <laughs> Well, there's, there's the advantage of, or the benefit of pinning with that third ball. Mike Poulin put up two or three, well, the team put up three ten boxes in a row. Mike had two, and he's going to gain and count, actually give his team the lead without the benefit of the mark. Pete waiting for the wood. Every pin critical, of course. See if he goes for them all or takes the two. He's going for the two. Gets him for a nine. So the lead is now three for Poulin and Hamilton with four boxes remaining. Each bowler has two more boxes now. Again, $400 to the runner-up team, $800 to the winning team. Louise Hamilton for her final two. Oh, that head pin threw it right over the top. Ooh, pretty nice good effort. effort. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good effort. And another 10 box. The fourth in a row. In fact, they haven't left a pin standing. As you see, they got five tens and the two marks early. And on the other side of the coin, Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt have left eight pins standing in this final game. Well, Louise has got some work here to get a 10 box. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, almost the spare. Well, this will be a 9 box. 95 through 8. So, the lead, three for Poulin and Hamilton. They're unable to put up a mark, and now Nancy Hunt for her final two. Just slipping by the head pin. Last week, if you want to call it an advantage, Mike Poulin was able to put up the last two boxes and was able to get the mark to win. Ooh. This week, Peter Flynn will have that opportunity. Bowling last. Nine box. Lead now up to four. I heard Peter leave one here. For me, he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a pretty good looking ball. Let's see. Once that, oh, oh slid oh, the no. 10 pin over. It rocked the eight pin. Well, let's see. And I almost want to give that piece of wood the furthest piece out, just to the right. A shot. Have the ball maybe carry him into the eight and use the wood for the seven. And oh, she's gonna have to cap it. Oh, oh, it. oh. You suppose she was trying to do that? I don't know. <laughs> right on Chris, it. If you ask me that question, I say, of course. <laughs> it went, didn't it? <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> well, that puts the pressure squarely on Mike Poulin. Oh, boy, what a leave. 1-3 pocket, and he's got the, what is it, the 5, 4-5, four, 2-4-5, five, 8-9, and 10. It's just a mess. That's what he has. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wants to get 3 or 4 here if he can. Ooh, oh, almost. Boy. Remember, he was leading by 3 after 8. So he was to get a mark and 7. Peter would still have to get another mark to beat him. Big box here from Mike Poulin. 
Actually, you have to get a little more than that because of the eight. Oh, eight my. frame, and it's not going to be an easy one. The three seven ten, two seven ten. But wooden behind that could help. Mike's trying to direct it over behind the two pin. It might have turned a little too much for him. Well, all he can do is hit the two pin and hope that the wood does something. Yep. This is the two pin. He's not going to. Yep. Oh, do you believe it? Yeah, it turned just a little too much for him, and it sent it right into the channel instead of into the 10 pin. That's a tough break. Now their only hope now is to get this for a 10 and hope Peter does not fill the spare. Well, he's going to fill it, but not with too many, they're hoping. Nope, that is a 9 box. Mike missed that 10 pin, clipping the wood in the channel for a nine. Here's another look at it. Wow. Yeah, that's a tough break. Well, Peter Flynn needs to get a 97 in order to win this match. And he's at 76 right now in the eighth plus the fill, which is seven. So that's 83 in the eighth. He does not have to mark. But he does anyway. What a shot. What a shot. Well, Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt have won it with that ball. Seven fill. But not from the lack of effort on the part of Mike Poulin and, Nath and uh, Louise Hamilton. They came from 48 pins down and actually grabbed the lead. The uh, final tally for Poulin and Hamilton, 342 for Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt, a 109 and a 355. What terrific close matches we saw all through this mixed double series. Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt, our champions, will be back to talk to all the bowlers and go for yet another winner in our bonus ball contest. When we come back, don't go away. All right, back on Stars and Strikes, and uh, our runners-up, Mike Poulin and Louise Hamilton. Uh, well, you won a match very similar to this last week, and this yeah. time it went the other way. Yeah, the first ball didn't work. Uh, we came back pretty good, but after that, uh, you know, like I said, squash doubles is tough. Well, it was a terrific comeback, though. You're down almost 50 pins in the second game. I know, but they came back in the third string mm -hmm. to win it. Well, again, uh, $400 uh, is the second prize money to split for the two of you and, uh, and our good, good wishes. Thanks very much Thank for coming. Very much. We appreciate it. Mike and Louise, thanks. And now Peter Flynn will throw our bonus ball. Over on uh, lane 31, Pete, if you would, and uh, we'll try and get another winner here. We had a winner a couple of weeks ago. We've got $30 in the uh, jackpot. And if we get a match, of course, not only the money goes to the uh, viewer, but we'll have three brand new sets of bowling balls for our two bowlers and for our viewer. And it's a four for Peter Flynn. Peter just, Peter just can't handle this pressure. Come on up, Pete, and come on up, Nancy, so we can chat here in a second. I know this will shock you, Pete, but it is not a match for, uh, for Ann Wood of Rochester, New Hampshire. Uh, Ann guessed seven and didn't know that Peter was going to be throwing the ball, obviously. <laughs> so for Ann, we'll send you a consolation gift. And for Peter and Nancy, uh, $800 to split between you, uh, first prize money. And uh, boy, it went right down to the end, though. Who says when you snooze, you lose? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, terrific match. Uh, both of you able to come up with some shots when you needed them, really. Yes, thank God for that last spare. I, mean, <laughs> I redeemed myself, I think. <laughs> well, you set it up uh, for Pete, and he was able to get uh, the one mark you needed to win it, and uh, the rest was all gravy. So congratulations, and boy, we're, we're just tired of seeing you. You know, we, you're going to have to stay good. out of That's here. Good. You're going to have to stay away from here for now until the Tournament of Champions. That's we'll good. see you then. I like hearing that. You just like see me. <laughs> Keep those threes and fours coming in, folks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Pete. Congratulations, and thanks, Nancy, and, and congratulations on your first appearance. Thank you very much. All right. Nancy and Peter, this applause for you. Congratulations on the win. And uh, what a terrific series that was. That may have been, uh, all in all, the best uh, mixed doubles we've ever had series in terms of the closeness of the matches. Absolutely, without a doubt. Every match went right down to the final two boxes and usually the final box. It's, it was just a great series. Well, we hope you'll stay tuned. Coming up in just a few minutes, our Ladies Doubles Championship. And don't forget, next Sunday at 12 noon, we'll be back here with a brand new series here on Stars and Strikes. We'll see you back in just a few minutes at the Londonderry Bowling Center. In the meantime, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long, everybody.